us out! Let us out of here! How long are you planning on doing that? Bang all you want, it won't open. <sighs> Damn it. Just take a second, calm down. We need cool heads. Hey! What the hell are you doing? I'm sorry. Do you know what that button does? Well, no, but maybe the door opens with it. I, I really wasn't going to push it, though. <sighs> Kids are in pain. But he could have a very good point. We haven't heard anything from Zero. Just sitting around here is useless. Maybe just one tiny push? Hey, Mira! Just kidding. I'm not that reckless. Don't scare me like that. But we really don't know much at all. We may be at the point of crazy decisions. The only thing we know for sure is what time it is. 1808. It must have been around 1330 when we fell asleep in the lounge. So, uh... Four and a half hours? Wow, you calculated that fast. And at your age, even. <laughs> was it good? I was just about to say the same thing. Seems you still have that problem with numbers, Eric. I recall you having trouble calculating change when we first met. Hey, come on now. Is that how you two met? I want to hear, I want to hear. Yeah? My face has got to be all red. I still remember every detail. The fateful encounter was on a Monday. The sky that morning in Nebraska was full of thick clouds, though the gloom cleared in an instant, like a miracle. I always mustered up my best smile for customers, even the boring regulars I was tired of seeing. I still offered the most delicious ice cream to them. I was getting sick of it, though. Oh, now, don't think it was my work I was unsatisfied with. I really truly love ice cream. But as the days passed, everything felt hollow, as if there was a hole in my heart. I thought it was just another normal day. And I wasn't expecting the moment it changed. I couldn't believe my eyes. I didn't think such a beautiful sight existed in this world. God, the feelings that hit me. I'd never felt anything like that before. That was when I realized this, this had to be a miracle. Mm -hmm. Mira entered my life. She was an angel that looked like a customer. But uh, shouldn't it be the other way? The details aren't important. Like you don't understand. Well, I don't blame you. I didn't get it either. Mira was just such a vivacious vision of beauty. I was just a lowly ice cream shop employee. Next to that, there was no way I would be a good match. But then Mira. Cut it out. Me, an angel? <laughs> you gotta be kidding. But it's true. You really are an angel to me, Mira. Happened to us. 
I could tell you were a nice person under all that. <laughs> what are you? You're an odd duck. <laughs> Looks like you've gone back to your dopey expression again. I guess you've calmed down, huh? Dopey? Man, you're really harsh, Mira. But yeah, I'm okay now. That's right, I'm fine. I can definitely smile no matter what. Hmm. I wonder why Zero decided to lock us up in here anyway. Right. Seems like too much effort for it to be just a joke. A lot of money was pumped into this whole thing. Maybe all of this is supposed to be part of the DCOM experiment? They wanted to investigate how a closed space affected change on emotions, right? But then why did they want normal people like us to apply? Wouldn't you want people in helpful professions to go to Mars? Like military officials, researchers, other skilled professionals like that. Maybe the reason they chose civilian subjects is... Because they're planning to send those kinds of people to Mars in the future. Hmm, that sounds right. Strangers living together on Mars for an extended period of time. What kind of problems would that bring? How would the subjects figure out solutions to the resulting troublesome situations? According to the DCOM staff, that's what the experiment was trying to determine. Like the chair-bound old man. He put us in a difficult position on purpose. To observe how we'd get out. The sponsor is a civilian organization that hopes to expand business worldwide. Maybe they expect to be part of a colonization of Mars in the future. Colonizing Mars? Hey, have you ever heard this before? If you want to transport live koi from Brazil to Japan, putting only koi fish in an aquarium will result in most of them dying. By adding something to that same container, you won't lose a single one. What is it? A piranha. A piranha? But how does that even work? I guess their self-preservation instincts kick in. I get it. The fish become so afraid of the piranha that they make an effort to live. That nervous state becomes the power to keep them alive. Uh-huh. In order to survive, you need that sense of urgency. I see. So, for an actual Mars mission, it'd be a good idea to have a murderer on the crew, huh? Kidding! <laughs> Eric, don't say scary things like that. Oh, so maybe all this stuff is something similar. Living quietly in DCOM becomes boring, so the emotional state will fade. If you intentionally inject a sense of emergency... What? 
destruction of all of them on the side. A yellow button exists on the wall of each. Pressing it activates the showers in the other wards, and they will bring down the solution of my particular No! It's not only acidic enough to melt a body, but it even dissolves glass and iron. Explaining what would happen if you were under it seems unnecessary. rest of this up to you. Huh? It'll be interesting to see how you handle this. Wh what? What happened? I... I... I see. Interesting. Did you push the button? Does this mean we're going to be saved? But then... The others will... You... You killed them! C Team and D Team are gonna... No, we did. We had to do this so we could survive. There was no way around it. But... It's not my fault! I told you from the start not to push it! What? What are you talking about? It was obvious you were planning on pressing it. But you're the one who actually did! It was your hand! You pushed it! You made a wise decision. You sacrifice the lives of others in order to continue your own survival. Zero. It truly is a natural human reaction. You simply made an emergency evacuation. The action is legally justifiable. There is no blame to be placed on you for your decision. Now, I'm sure you would like to get out of here immediately. But before that, I apologize. You must all sleep again. Why? 1929. You have done exactly as I commanded. The memory loss drug will not be injected into the three wheel. No, no. I didn't do it. He's the one who pushed it, so he's. It would be. But I already told you. I, I didn't kill anybody. I was only watching. Dad, I was just watching. No. Chris didn't do anything wrong. I was the one who... Please, 
Forgive him, Dad. Cold. It's cold. The water was so... so cold. Pleasant dreams. Mom! It's the decontamination room. Decontamination? <sighs> I think we've been... trapped in this room before. Is it just deja vu? Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. So do I. I hate this button. It's the same for you, Carlos? You feel it as well? Yeah, not just her. I sense it too. Somehow, this button is very important. Hmm. Maybe we lost our memories of it. The drugs. In the bracelets. Then, what in the world? This is... The lounge. Uh, what happened in the decontamination room? It will be inconvenient if you forgot the cause of the deaths of others. That's right. I... That button. Now announcing the current casualties. C-Team, Carlos, Akane, Junpei. D-Team, Diana, Vi, Sigma. These six are now deceased. As a result, six X-Passes will be revealed. Dream, Key, Quark, Mom. That is all. It's a lie! Everyone... Everyone... Uh, uh, yeah! Eric. Oh no... I... What have I done? 
no need to blame yourself. All you did was make the right choice. <laughs> but... Forget about it. We need to focus on what's next. We have six passwords. So can't we leave? I... Uh, overreacted a, a bit. But you know, maybe it's... it's better this way. What I mean is... I... I know we're all in danger from this game. But instead of being forced to kill each other, it's just a vote and a press of a button. Yeah. Plus, we're just put to sleep after. So to suddenly learn the whole thing is over? Wait, what if it's not just that? The amnesia drugs. In the bracelets. Maybe we didn't get injected this time, but what if every time we wake up, we have to go through the same scenario over and over again? And we're put to sleep after each one. Our memories of it, gone. Give it up. We don't need to talk about this. Let's just get out of here. He's right. Let's... Wait! Aren't we forgetting someone? That's so mean. Why in the... Let's see if we can get it off. Hey, about before... You were saying we're repeating our actions with no memories. It's like the Sleeping Beauty problem. The Sleeping Beauty what? It's one of the famous paradoxes. The experiment starts on a Sunday. The subject is put to sleep, and then a coin is flipped. If it's heads, the subject is woken up on Monday, asked a question, and put to sleep again. And that's it. That's all they do for heads. And if it's tails? They're woken up on Monday, asked a question, and put to sleep. But that's just the same as heads. To that point, it is. But it's different after that. After the subject falls asleep again, their memories from Monday are erased. They are then asked the same question again on Tuesday. What's the question? What was the probability it was heads? That's it? Yep. That's it. Hey. How is that a problem, then? It's obvious. There's a 50-50 chance of it being heads. You'd think so, normally. Uh, but when you're being asked it, there are three positions you could be in. The coin was heads, it is Monday. The coin was tails, it is Monday. And the coin was tails, it is Tuesday. That would make the probability of it being heads as one in three, right? No, I don't think so. It's a coin. So it'll always be 50-50 odds, no matter what. Okay, let's change some things. If heads appears, it's the same as before. But if it's tails, it ends up repeating 10,000 times. 10,000? Wake, question, sleep, memory erased, 
Wake, question, sleep, memory erased. Go through this 10,000 times. Does the probability still stay as 50-50 after all that? Oh, uh, huh. Thinking about it, wouldn't the chances of it being tails be higher than heads? If you put it that way, yeah. So, w which one is correct? No one knows. They don't have an answer yet. Even the scientists can't decide between one in two and one in three. It's an unsolved problem. Huh. <laughs> you know a lot about this. I read a random book on it once. Well, it was on metempsychosis, but they deal with basically the same thing. Metempsychosis? What is it? Wouldn't waking up without your memories be just like being reborn? Oh, yeah, that sounds similar. Uh, I, I'm not really sure. You don't believe in it? I meant there's no real meaning. Because when you're reborn, all the memories you had during your past life are already gone, right? That means metempsychosis isn't really needed. If there's no memories, there's no point? Well, no one can perfectly remember things that happened when you were a kid. Hell, sometimes you can't even remember something from a month ago. So, going by what you said, Everything you did before a month ago has no meaning? Uh, uh, huh. She's asking if memories really are that important for making you who you are. What is important then? Well, something must be. Well, it looks like we can't do anymore. We're gonna have to give up here. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. No way around it. We did everything we could. Come on, let's go.
Yes! It opened! Okay, let's go. Hey, what's wrong? What are you doing? I decided that I'd stay here too. I wonder why. Maybe it's because I don't have memories? I know nothing about the outside world, so I guess I didn't really want to leave. Did I make the right choice? Or was it the wrong one? Yeah, <laughs> that must be it. <laughs>